To be an American expat where at least I know I'm free. That's right, everyone. My name is Dama Dominique, and I'm an American expat living here in Paris, where I have never paid $8.99 for some pancake syrup. I've also never seen this in the States. I think this is, like, fake. <laughs> I've also never even eaten any of this stuff in the American now. Bonjour. Je suis américain, mais j'ai jamais vu. <laughs> j'ai jamais vu des choses comme ça aux États-Unis. C'est marrant de, de comparer ce qu'il y a. Donc elles sont en bien ou mal oh, bah, Vous lâchez vous, il n'y a pas de la... soucis. Hein. <laughs> non, mais apparemment les gens l'aiment bien ici. Oui, parce que on l'a pas. On s'intéresse à ce qu'on n'a pas. J'ai jamais vu ça aux États-Unis. Ah oui J'ai jamais vu ça. Peut-être que je devrais prendre ça. <laughs> oh. All right, so I am here to compare and contrast the big parts of um, American culture in and outside of the States. We're talking big structural changes like healthcare to the little tiny things like who has better chewing gum, which the States does, by the way. Cool, I gotta get you some chewing gum. <laughs> I know I'm not gonna like it, but I'm curious about what marshmallow fluff is. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> New Yorkers. I've never seen that. <laughs> Pat, where at least I know. <laughs> Chloe, have you ever heard that song? No. <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> what a great place to live. Please fix this door. Janky bootleg door. What, Chloe? It expires. 16. 06. Wait, wait that means it's like four months expired. Wait, because we do the day and the thing the other way around. But there's no 16th month. There's no 16th month. <laughs> month though, I do know that. Also, how could they keep this on the shop? Would nobody check? Chloe, there was a mouse in that supermarket. <laughs> Right, so, you know, I'm leaving for the States in a day or two, tomorrow, like, I, I know when my flight is, it's tomorrow. I hope so. <laughs> I'm going to the States and I haven't been there since February. Now, Chloe here, I, I wrote an intro for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like really are on a reality show. <laughs> this is Chloe. She's from London and says things like maths with a plural S or cheeky or take the piss and I still don't know for sure how to use that one. Chloe here has never been to the United States. In your free time, you fantasize about riding yellow school buses. Yes. Which you do know is illegal at your age. Why? Because it's for children! <laughs> I'm small enough to be one of <laughs> True. The cool part is that every day there's something that you say or that I say and we're both like, what? Yeah. And then you've never been to the States and there are so many things that are different there that we're gonna get into in this video. Okay, so let me bless you with um, Snapple. Okay. Now, Snapple has all kinds of different flavors. We just got the kiwi strawberry one. Okay, okay. do it's, I have to shake like it up not... or like Snapple it around? <laughs> I don't even know. You know juicy juice? No. <laughs> juicy juice. Juicy juice is my jam. Is it some? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a juice. And it's juicy. Okay, okay, let's open this. I can't because I have a like a bum wrist. Yeah, I was skating, roller skating, and I fell, and now I have this. Okay, we have like a lot to get to in this video. It's like... Oh my god, I felt something click. Sometimes when I can't open it's something like... like this, I get a Oh, he like put it on your wrist too now. Like, <laughs> we both like need this. <laughs> From trying to open this apple. Two thousand years later. Oh, 
Come <laughs> on! This is the cute part. You have like a little saying or something oh, in the cap, right. and some people collect those. Real fact: a full moon is nine times brighter than a half moon. Can you do an American accent and like just say a sentence that sounds very American I to you? Right. Um. So the other day, I was like, "Dad, get me a macchiato." He was like, "No, Tiffany. You've had ten lattes today." Stop. <laughs> I'm like Tiffany. <laughs> It's good though, right? Like, it's not bad. Like, snappily. It's like... Okay, so then what we do, actually, is we open the cookies and we dip them in the Snapple. Plain, we don't do that. That's one thing we don't do. We dip them in the fluff. That's <laughs> what we do. <laughs> okay, no, but these are two products that I've actually never seen. Do you know what Girl Scout cookies are? I've heard of them. I've seen them on shows where they make people buy the cookies. The, the kids make the yeah. people buy the cookies yeah. and then they all rooting against each other to try to get like a, a, a trip and then like the company pockets all the money. That's like how it works. Exploitation, what I want. <laughs> but the cookies are so good. Really? That's how they get you. Yeah. Oh my god. Decent cookie. <laughs> this is literally open. <laughs> okay. This is like already open. Just like Two hours later. All right, so, all right, now I've told you about this concept every day, every morning in school. You have to stand up. There's a time when they get on the announcements. You stand up, put your right hand on over your heart. You look to the flag that's in the classroom and you recite. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic <laughs> for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible. With, with liberty, liberty and, and justice ju for all! <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just like, really, like the fact that you have to do that every day. Well, and stare at the flag. Yeah, it just, the whole thing seems very like culty. But I'm telling you, it's like, right. it's so normal. Like, you just, mm. that's Part what Part of the you daily do. routine, you just get up. You just get up and you do it. And I don't even think people are really understanding what they're saying or even hearing everyone's voices like mm. together. It sounds kind of like, like you said, creepy and culty. Yeah, yeah. I asked Chloe to come up with some questions that she might have for um, I don't know, about the United States. I have some questions. Do you guys really get on a yellow bus to school? <laughs> you can choose to get on it or not, but you have like a time. And if you're not, if you were, I think, there at the end of the driveway, like you get honk honk. Right. And then there's all this like, there's like politics on where you want to sit in the bus. Mm. Like cool kids would always sit in the back. Right. And then like the dorks would sit in the front. Mm. <laughs> where were you sat? I was always sat in the back. What you talking about, Chloe? <laughs> what are you talking about? Where were you sat? I love how you guys say it like that. What? Would you say like, I'm sitting. I'm sitting on the I'm bed. Sitting. Do you, like, what is it about someone? Say if there was a stranger that went past you, that would maybe make you think that like, Talking loud. I do it too though, like I, my voice just like, I can hear it now, it's like projecting. Right. Whereas <laughs> we're gonna have to add subtitles for me, I'm like talking really quietly. <laughs> <laughs> well, also I think it makes sense because I'm from like a country town mm. where I don't need to like be quiet when I'm in a metro car, where you're from like, basically London mm. where there's tons of people around so you're yeah. you're aware of your voice yeah and I don't think people you're in your car all the time in the True. states for the most part you guys take public transport <laughs> that's funny that was a funny question <laughs> how'd you come up with that joke this is what I always say here's my thing like clearly I'm pro-american in many ways and like anti-american in others this is one way that you know, like that part's gonna get cut <laughs> let me say that over okay sometimes I feel the need to like talk bad about the United States. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm talking about the United States, I <laughs> I find myself defending the states in ways that like other, mm. other people don't. That was mm. very wordy, okay? Basically, no, but I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Mine's the same since I've left like England. I like stick up for it more now. I know? stick up for the United yeah. States in many ways. So like is public transportation all over the place? No, it's not. Mm. But also the United States like became more popular when the car was like the main mode of transportation, at least in the States. Right. That's also like not true because New York was the first city, like. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? Like the United States really grew in prominence mm -hmm. in like what, the 40s to the 90s? And that's when the car was like it. It's also huge, you know? Like it's a huge no, but country. France is pretty big and you can get from like- Girl, that's Texas. That's one state. Actually, that's uh, that's another thing. It's like people always say like, "Oh, Americans never travel," and I'm like, "Well, there are two things happening here. One, they don't get they get don't get time off work, mm -hmm. which is like another issue. Like, I don't agree with that either, but that's another issue. Part two is like, okay, if you're gonna travel anywhere, 
it already takes five hours to get out of the country. Mm. And then where are you going to go? Canada? Like, that's the same, more or less the same culture as the States. Right. Or Mexico, which is like... Right. People go to Mexico all the time. Y'all can take hour train rides and buses to different countries and different cultures and languages. Yeah, it's usually cheaper as well. Like you can get a 10 pound flight to Spain. I do this all the time. This is a very American thing, you guys. As I'm trying to set up the camera and the tripod, I'm like, okay, we'll put this here. Okay, and okay, just like that. Yep, cool, now. Like I'm talking to myself, Yeah. narrating. I don't need to be talking. You're like, you don't. <laughs> yeah, like you're right, it's say like it again. <laughs> Um, la 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 la. <laughs> I just did it again! <laughs> I was genuinely so curious what it tasted like. Fluff? Yeah. I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't know one person who's actually had that. Oh. Or who would wear a shirt like this. <laughs> do you want it to be the first? But I do know people who do the electric slide, so. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight. Do 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 <laughs> but then what's this thing? It's like... You oh, know, when you're like oh, round yeah. it up? Yeah. <laughs> That's like a secret weapon, you know? Like, electric slide comes on at a festival or something. Everyone stands up and you're like, how do you guys know this dance? You can't see it. It's electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. And you gotta feel it. It's electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. And you know it's there. Here, there, and yes. That's okay, you go that way too. That's the thing. start here with the drinking age. We're starting light, we're starting light, and then we're working our way up. What always surprises me when I go back is not that the drinking age is 21, but that like the cashiers take it so seriously. Even to the point like I was buying a kombucha in Whole Foods. Which isn't alcoholic. Well kombucha has like 2% alcohol and they asked for my ID. <laughs> they freaking asked for my ID. I was like, give it up already. It's you kombucha. Have, like, young skin. 2% alcohol, like <laughs> not even a baby could get drunk off that. <laughs> Even if you want to go to like a nice park in the States and like have a nice picnic with wine, mm. like a police officer would probably come over and be like, no, you pas faire ça. Right. And he He's may French or may not. Is, is I don't know. They do this because then it forces people to go in bars where it's more expensive. Mm -hmm. And then the American economy makes more money. Yeah. How much in London, for example, how much is like a glass of wine in London? Fucking hell. <laughs> Depends. Mostly, you're probably paying like. Five, six no, because pounds. in the states it's expensive. Like drinking is expensive yeah. in the states. I could. Didn't you say it was like twenty pounds for a glass of wine in New York or something? Okay, not twenty pounds, oh. but like you can pay probably thirteen to sixteen dollars okay. for a glass of wine. Right. Yeah. If we were in a gas station mm -hmm. and we pick up this Snapple, and on the shelf it says that that Snapple is a dollar fifty, mm -hmm. how much would you expect to pay at the cash register? <laughs> I know that it should be a dollar fifty, but I've heard that you go to the till and it increases in price, right? Because it's the tax. They tax. add the tax after. But why don't they have it on the? Okay, shelf? again with uh. my conspiracy theories, <laughs> my paranoid self over here. I really think that they do it because you're like, oh, this is gonna be so cheap, and then you end up having to pay more at the end, which like again fuels the like beast of the American yeah. economy. And then maybe that thing as well. Like by the time you're at the cashier, you. Don't want to be rude and be like, oh, actually, like, I'll put this back. You're like, fuck it. Okay. When you're a server, your national hourly rate is a lot lower than, like, working retail. Why? Oh, because the tip thing, right? Because you get tips. The restaurant can pay you less, which is, like, two, three dollars. That was, like, the minimum wage when I was, like, in Indiana. It was, like, two eighty-five, And then you're expected An to make tips. An hour? An hour. And then that you gets got... you one Snapple! <laughs> That's like one Snapple, yeah. It doesn't make sense. Like, why wouldn't you just... They're still working. They're still working hard. So, like, just give them the minimum wage. And mm. then if they get tips on top of that, it's just... That's what it is. That's what it is, yeah. Just, like, let them enjoy it. And is there a thing as well where, like, they have to share out their tips? Or, like, Sometimes, like, yeah. Okay, some yeah, yeah. bars and restaurants do that. Like, yeah. I I worked three days at Johnny Rockets. Do you know what that is? This is my bit. It sounds very American. <laughs> It's one of those that, like, you're supposed to be on roller skates, and then, like, oh, you put right. money in the jukebox, and I literally joined because I wanted to dance and sing. Right. When the One of the waitresses that I was shadowing would, like, get the tips, and she was supposed to share with everybody, and she'd be like, they don't need to know how much money you make. And then she'd put it in her pocket! <laughs> <laughs> people say you should share the tips because the cooks should be getting right. tips, too, and they're not okay, the ones yeah. interacting with true, people. True, true, true. But the whole thing is, like, 
I feel like we're missing a point here that like yeah. why is the restaurant not paying the worker why exactly. is it on the why is it client? on the clients yeah because there's that you have this culture I see this on Twitter a lot where people are like if you don't tip then you're a fucking asshole like no 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 um and I'm like but what if the person who just like wants to treat themselves and is dining out but doesn't have a lot of spare money like but you then well you didn't well you wouldn't dine out that that would be the American that's attitude so crazy again yeah I feel like we're missing in, like the restaurant should be paying them yeah. In that situation, you're punishing both, like, the workers and, like, normal people from lower socioeconomic backgrounds that want to just dine out, you know? While well, they're, like, Mr. Krabs, and he, like, pockets all the <laughs> yeah, money. Exactly. That's, like, what it does. And because people work on, like, a tip system mm -hmm. uh, in the restaurant, even after your, like, dessert, and say you want to just chill and, like, read your book for a little mm -hmm. bit, like, here in France, you could spend all day with, like, one coffee. Mm -hmm. They'll come around and be like, you need anything else? And you'll be mm -hmm. like, no, no, I'm just chilling. They'll be like, okay, I'll be around with a check. Right, like... Get them in, get them out. Get them in, get them get, out. Get more money, right? And again, you can't blame the servers because no. they're just trying to make their money. Exactly. I have never heard any any of my non-American friends talk about taxes as much as my American friends talk about taxes. Mm. Which is interesting to me because we're like one of the least taxed countries, but right. everyone seems more worried about taxes than anyone else. I've never even heard you talk about taxes. Because I don't pay them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. No, because in the States, though, the system's set up differently. Mm. I remember when I was with my ex. Ding, ding, ding! <laughs> I need to Bring him in! <laughs> New record, though, like 20 minutes into the video. Yeah. He was always like, what do you mean you have to do your taxes at the end of the year? Mm. Like, you as a, a worker, employee, you have to file your own taxes. Whereas, mm. I, I believe, from what I've learned in the rest of the world, yeah. It's the employer who just does everything for you and you, you're just chilling. Yeah. yeah, it's the same in the UK, like they sort it out for you. Even student finance, even paying back your student loan, they take it out of your thing automatically depending on your wages. Like mm. you never have to consciously go and pay your student loan. You can if you want to, but like most people just do it the They'll like way. deduct it. Yeah, exactly. Ah. But if you're a freelancer, you have to do your own taxes. Okay, so that's yeah. the same in the States, but to, like my mom, Right. She works for a company and she still has to do her taxes. Mm. But the reason you do them is because you say like how much money you earned, how many like expenses you had, all that kind of right. stuff. And then sometimes, most of the time actually, you get like a refund. Right. You get a tax refund because you overpaid the government. Okay, we have small things like the month and the day are swapped, oh, like right. whatever. Yeah, then we have the 24 hour clock that I think that most Americans wouldn't know how to tell time if it were the 24-hour clock. Oh, yeah, I've heard this. We call it military time. Yeah. Like, I don't actually think anybody in my family would know how to know what time 17 is. Oh. What time is it? 5 o'clock. That's right! Happy hour! <laughs> I think the reason the United States sticks with the 12-hour system is because we have four time zones. So when oh. TV goes on, it's like, oh, this show's on at 8, 7 central. Right, that and it would be eight. too much to be like, 20007 yeah. central central yeah inches yards feet pounds and miles which ones do you y'all use like everything i swear you use everything i was going to say I'm, i honestly I, if you I say your height how tall are you 5 foot okay so you're using feet there right i just really wish that the united states would join the rest of the world and use the system that everyone uses i'm not going to like cuz when you guys talk about weather like when i see in films they're like oh it's like it's 20 degrees i'm like 20 degrees, I'm like, get your shorts out, you know? <laughs> the Electoral College, do you understand that? No. Nope. Neither do I. Next. <laughs> the Electoral College is a system that we use to elect the president in the United States of America. It's not the popular vote. The popular vote is you vote for somebody, I vote for somebody, and the majority wins. That's not how it works in the States. Not in the UK, but I think. Oh, really? Mm. Like, do you agree with this? Mm-mm. <laughs> if a thousand people vote for Trump and a thousand and one people vote for Biden, all the people who voted for Trump no longer matter. Their votes no longer count. And then Biden wins that state. Oh, okay. And each state is attributed certain points mm. by the population. Mm -hmm. it, they're doing a lot. Like, I don't think it needs to be like So this. each vote is a point? So California has like 55. Mm -hmm. So Biden would get 55 points. What do you mean fifty-five? <laughs> <laughs> because back in the day, California, or no, not back in the, even now, California has fifty-five. 
people. <laughs> Two hours later. Okay, Chloe versus Damon. We're running for president. We are in Florida. If you get 10 votes and I get 11 votes, those 10 votes that voted for you don't matter because winner takes all. Right. So now, since we're in Florida, Florida has a certain amount of points attributed to it, depending on the population of the state. They were trying to make the, the states, like, have the power. So some states have more power than others. But yeah, the ratios, like, don't make sense sometimes. Okay. Like, I think Wyoming has, like, 400,000 people and they get, like, three votes. I don't know what the what numbers are, you, are. I'm so confused by the 55 thing still. California has a lot of people. But then what do the points equate to? Oh, those are actual people. <laughs> Day two. These fifty-five people are supposed to be like trusted servants, and they will oh. they will then vote for the person that that the people of California voted for. They have to vote what their people vote for, basically. Yeah. Okay. But why the extra step? step? <laughs> Day three. If um, wait, no. How do I explain it? Basically, <laughs> basically. Even... Day four. But the system makes it so that people apparently in big cities can't control like what happens in Wyoming. Okay. So Wyoming's given like a lot more like a higher ratio of mm. vote. Anyways, all of this to say like the person who gets the most amount of votes like doesn't win. That makes no sense. That's what Cuz that is what happened with Hillary, right? Yeah. yeah. What do you think of America? What do you know about? What do you know about American healthcare? Here we go. Let's start there. All I know is I saw this tweet one time where it was like somebody's bill for giving birth. They had to pay for like mine. the bed that... <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> they had to pay for the bed that they gave birth and like they had to pay for like fucking like blanket that the child gets wrapped in. Like everything, you'll stay there. The actual birth procedure, like you have to pay for everything. Which I think it's messed up. It doesn't make any sense. Like- I, I thought that was normal until I left. Yeah. That's the thing I think people like think that that's just how it is around the world, mm. you know, and you wouldn't know unless you travel. I don't think it makes sense. Like, it just means that obviously the people with more money are gonna have more health and then they're gonna like take the best jobs and then it's just gonna be like a system again where True. people from like, again, lower socioeconomic backgrounds aren't represented in the world because- They can't get out. Well, yes, but, and like if you're suffering, like people from those backgrounds are more likely to suffer health problems and they're the ones who are not being able to access the money because think about it if you're rich right you can go to bed and you're probably in a really nice quiet neighborhood and you're working a job where you're not doing all these crazy hours mm -hmm. you're getting more sleep sleep means you have good health you can probably afford to go to like i don't know like whole foods and buy like the really expensive food your health is going to be better you're not going to most cases you probably won't need health care as much as like mm -hmm. someone from someone with less money so they're going to have more Eating health this. issues <laughs> they're going to have more issues but they're not going to be able to have them dealt with because they don't have the money to deal with them. That's like fucked up. In the like, no. Ethically, it just doesn't. Morally, ethically, everything it just doesn't seem like it makes me angry. Like it, <sighs> it makes me angry. Yeah. Yeah. Even an episode of Friends, Joey like has kidney problems. Or right? He had like. Yeah, a, he didn't want to go to the doctor. Like, and I was, I never understood it when I was younger and I watched it and now I'm like oh because he had to pay for it. How do you guys justify it? How do you Basically, justify? Yeah. It? yeah, like why would people yeah. like it? Well, because they say like I don't want to have to pay for somebody else's health insurance if they smoke and make bad decisions. But I also don't think that those people realize like they're paying for streets even if you're not using them, highways even if you don't have a car to take it, you're paying for the mm. firefighter even if you're not calling the fire. Like those are things that people yeah. you're still paying for, you yeah. know, for the greater good. Most of the time, your employer gives you insurance, right. and you're good. Mm -hmm. They probably like deduct it from your salary, right. so you don't think that you're paying for it, but you actually. Are. If you have it, that's great. Say if you're a freelancer, you have to get your own, mm. um, or you don't. Like there are people in my family who just don't have health insurance. Is it expensive? Like if you buy your own health depends insurance, on your income. Expensive. Okay. But this is okay. Just get ready. You might need another cookie for this one. You're paying monthly to enter into your health care program. Uh -huh. Let's say let's just say two hundred dollars a month to enter in your health care program. You would think that paying $200 a month that you get access to healthcare, right? Yeah, you'd hope so after paying no. 200 <laughs> <laughs> You have to reach what's called a deductible, meaning that you have to pay $200 a month, but you still have to reach like seven, they said it like 7,000, 8,000, it depends which provider you go with. Based off how much you pay monthly, that determines what deductible you pay. So say if you pay $500 a month, 
you probably don't really have a deductible to meet. I'm not following. <laughs> okay, okay, look. Deductible is basically an amount that you have to pay before your insurance starts working. So before my health insurance would kick in, kick in that means that I have to reach $9,000 of medical bills before my insurance even works. In addition to the $200 that I'm paying every month, I also have to pay at least $9,000 in medical bills. So I break my wrist, I get a sore throat, and I need antibiotics. Those bills have to rack up to $9,000 before my insurance will then pay for my health care. So say you just like have a little like oopsie, like you have that and it costs you a hundred. That's a hundred towards my $9,000 deductible. You're never going to reach your deductible. Which means you, you're paying into a system that you're never going to benefit from. Exactly. So not only wow. this, but once you meet your deductible, mm. they make you pay what's called a copay. So you show up to the doctor and your copay is like $15 or $20. Chloe, to get access to this program, you have to enroll in a special enrollment period. Oh, <laughs> you can't just show up and be like, oh my God, I hurt my wrist, I need health insurance. The health care provider provi like, only gives you certain times of the year that you can sign up for it. But what if you break your phone at a different... This is what happens. So, okay, Obama, for example, oh, let you stay on your parents till you were 26. Right. There was a moment when, like, I turned 26, but my birthday wasn't until, like, six more months down the mm -hmm. line. But I couldn't get insurance because I wasn't in a special enrollment period. But even when you reach your deductible, pay lots in month, a month, there are still times that your insurance will come back and be like, oh, actually, you didn't need... You didn't need that rap. Like, you doing roller skating was actually your fault. We're, we're not gonna pay for oh it. Oh, my... God. It's like scandal. This is more sinister than I even like realized. And like the craziest part is that people think that this is better. Like mm. that's why. That's why Because it's kind of like each man for their own. Like I work hard, so I deserve the healthcare that I get, and I pay for that. And yeah, yeah. So say you, you know, you've just lost your job. You can't pay your rent. You, it's it's a snowy day in New York. You trip over the snow and you break your leg. How? Uh, Don't ask the do you, question. Do you go to the hospital? You would, you would try not to go because you no longer, because your employer was giving you insurance and now you don't have it because it's connected to your employer. This is actually a tip for everybody. When this happened, mm -hmm. I went to the NHS's website two days ago and typed in like jammed thumb. What do I do? Do I get a wrap? Do I need to go get an x-ray? Yeah. I didn't go to mine because it didn't exist. There is... <laughs> there is a United States one. And people do have like really good healthcare, meaning like you could go get a checkup if you have a toothache and like mm. they would give you something. But those people who say they have the best healthcare, they're probably paying more in their thing, right? So technically you're still just... Literally be cheaper to buy a ticket and go on like a all-inclusive beach resort in Mexico, get treated over there and then fly back than to actually like, go to the hospital down the street. I shouldn't laugh, it's like not funny, but... Okay, I'm uh, wrapping up this video. This this one that you're watching. <laughs> I'm here in Chicago and I had a few observations that I didn't mention in the video. The first one is, I forgot to tell Chloe that there's music everywhere in this damn country. You get in the elevator, it's music playing. You walk in the lobby, it's a different song. You walk into Starbucks and like the music is loud. Like, there's just music everywhere and it's always like... Top 40. Then I went in to get this little latte and they're like, Happy Friday! And I'm like, whoa, it's like 7 to 7 15 a.m. Then I was like, hi, can I get an oat milk latte? Oh, you want the oatmeal? No, 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 just like the oat milk latte. She's like, oh sorry, we got the barrier, I got a mask on, you got the mask on, and then you got those glasses on. Like I like that people are teased, like they <laughs> And then speaking of tipping, they got me. They got me. You're having such a good interaction with the barista. And the tip jar is like right there and you don't want her to think like that the conversation was bad. So then you feel obligated to tip, which again, like creates almost like this fakeness. This is exactly why people sometimes say that Americans are fake because uh, maybe the intentions are not actually genuine. Well, back to this video. How much was it? 29 euros. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put a price on the liberty. <laughs> Freedom ain't free! I always feel like the people who say things like that mm -hmm. don't realize, they just don't realize that there are people like you who are like just as free. <laughs> Do you know what jaywalking is? Oh my god, I learned about that recently and I can't believe it's a real thing. No? <laughs> I'm like an ex-convict and that's why I don't live in the States anymore. <laughs>
I was in a park one day in New York. I was showing my Swiss friend. I was showing him the view of the Hudson River at night. It was beautiful. In order to get there, you have to cross through a park. We're in the park after dark. I didn't know that park's closed. I guess I just thought that I'm a human on earth and I should be able to be in the nature when I want to. <laughs> right. And then the cops came and they gave me a citation. They give you this pink slip that says like, you need to go to court to like prove your case because you were in a, you were disobeying the park rules. Like in that same court, you have people who were like, drinking underage or like drinking in parks or riding their bikes on the sidewalk or urinating in public. Like what happens afterwards? Like why didn't it go further? Why didn't you like? Because I showed up in court. I was like, no, I don't have a lawyer. You're assigned a lawyer there, mm -hmm. like the public lawyer, which by the way, lawyers always tell you like those ones that are publicly assigned to you are bad. Why? Because they're free and they, are, they cost money. <laughs> so anyways, I said, I don't have a lawyer. And they said, if I don't get in trouble for six months, then I won't have it on my record. Like in a park, like I was, I wanted to scream at them, like, I'm a human. If that was the case in Paris, everyone here would be at court. Kiss everyone would be at court. Kissing in public, like drinking in Like in, in one day, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stop. I really do do it, huh? Access to this, like, no, please no. <laughs> My God, no. You asked earlier about public transportation. Yeah. There have been times when I'm in my hometown and I'm like, no, 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 trust me, like, I just want to walk to the store. Mm. Which, by the way, they're with no sidewalks. <laughs> and people will truly, like, be concerned for mm. you. Like, no, 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 don't, no, trust me, like, I'll come pick you up. Right. And you're like, no, I just want to go walk. And like, but why? What, where, I can just come get you. Like, if your borough voted for conservative, then they would rule your borough. But, like, say... Borough? <laughs> yeah, like... Basically, do you guys have, like, a class system? And is there kind of, like, a stigmatization of, like, working class individuals? Yeah, people would ridicule like the country, the middle of the states. You know what they call them? Uh, hillbillies. Oh, well, no, but <laughs> wow, so offensive! <laughs> people call the center of the United States mm. the flyover states. Oh, like as in like you can just skip that. Just skip flyover. it and you're flying from the east coast to the west coast because right. that's like where the things are. You think, how would you define American humor? Um, very sitcom-y. I only say that because one time a French person told me that American humor is situational. I'm like, what does oh, that mean? Yeah. And then I learned that the word sitcom means situational comedy. Meaning like, you're not funny in the terms of like you're making jokes. You like come up with like knock knock, oh. but it's just you're like funny in situations. Right. American schools as cliquey as they are on shows. Like, cliquey? Like, yeah, like... Clicky? You, cl yeah, cliquey? <laughs> Never said the word in her life. <laughs> so yeah, I moved to Paris like around two years ago. Because I came here once, I saw the Eiffel Tower sparkle, and I thought that's what every day was going to look like. But instead, I get called a bitch in the laundrette by <laughs> random Parisians. <laughs> so, Again, great place to live. Come back in, Damon. <laughs> yeah.